Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. This week's questions answered video, long-term loaded magazines. For everyday carry, duty use, home defense, uh, if your firearm of choice, your handgun, of course, is magazine fed. Um, one of those persistent myths or persistent uh, sources of misinformation or debate even is how long can you leave a magazine loaded uh, without it adversely affecting the spring and the body of the magazine itself. And this is obviously a very relevant question. It is something that we should definitely ask. And it is, again, one of those cyclical arguments. We keep coming back to it. Uh, but it's definitely relevant because you don't want the magazine to fail you. One of the primary sources of a malfunction can be the magazine's quality, the ammunition in the magazine, and the magazine's general condition. So two different platforms, uh, Glock 17 magazine, this is actually one of the Magpul mags with an Arredondo plus 5 extension, a PMAG, Gen 2 PMAG with the Magpod, which is somewhat irrelevant because it just replaces the floor plate. Uh, this is a duty mag as well. And then Magpul's awesome D60 drum. All three of these are currently loaded with duty ammunition. They have been, uh, especially in the case of the PMAG, this has been loaded for about eight months. This one's been loaded for about four months. This has been loaded for probably about six months. Now, I use these as an example uh, because prior to them being loaded for those periods of time, they were loaded previously. And just as a general OCD, uh, if you will, aspect or, or PMCS maybe, if you will, I'll unload them, check the conditions and the ammunition, and also take the magazines to the range and feed them with training ammo to see if they're still functioning cycling correctly. One of the biggest worries when polymer magazines became more popular was that they weren't going to provide the same resistance to swelling with a magazine actually bowing out as your venerable me metal magazines, your aluminum and even your steel magazines would. So that was definitely a concern that people had when polymer magazines became more popular. And it's still a very real concern with lower quality polymer magazines. Because I have a very large sample size, I see a lot of magazines from a lot of different manufacturers come through classes, even though I don't see as many brands of firearms they're fed into. Glock is still the most common handgun I see in handgun classes, and the AR platform is still the most common rifle platform I see in rifle classes. So I see a lot of different magazines, and I see which ones do better than others. Uh, when it comes to the Glock platform, the Glock magazines are very, very good. The Magpul magazines are also very good. I can't say I've seen a consistent difference between the two of them, although the Magpul magazines do tend to have a little bit more friction upon loading, um, just based on the interaction of the follower and the magazine body itself, than I would say I get from a Glock magazine. But when it comes to long term, again, the Glock mag or the Magpul magazines haven't been around as long. Uh, I've had these for a year and change, and I haven't encountered any significant or really any issues with them at all. In fact, they tend to drop free more reliably than my Glock magazines do. Now, with the AR platform, PMAGs have been around for a very long time, relatively speaking. The Gen 2 magazines I have um, are all still doing very, very well, but keep in mind that a magazine is a perishable item. Magazines are not they're just not going to last forever. I have been able to reach the end of service life on a few PMAGs, some of the earlier ones, the Gen 1s and then the Gen 2s that I had. So don't think of a magazine as, a, as, a, as, an, as an indeterminate investment or a long-term investment. It's not going to outlast the firearm, all things considered. So if a magazine starts to give you problems, it may not be because it was left loaded and the spring took a set. Uh, because that's not really a thing. When you look into the metallurgy behind springs and how springs function and, and just how things uh, work, if it's a high quality spring and it, it actually has the properties that a spring is supposed to have, you shouldn't have any consistent or really any considerable issues with the spring itself taking on some kind of uh, metal fatigue to where it's going to start having or start giving you issues with feeding the ammunition to the gun. Can it happen? Absolutely, if you're to load it for an extended period of time. When I say extended period of time, I mean years and years and years and years and years. My general advice to anyone, regardless of magazine type, is every few months, unload it, run some training ammo through it anyway, because that's what you're going to do. If you're worried about the loading and the unloading of ammunition, you can always throw on some cotton gloves or some nitro gloves or even some latex gloves for the unloading and loading process. You're not uh, coating the, the casing and the, and the bullet of the ammunition with those natural skin oils, which can lead to 
arguably, again, um, degradation of the ammunition itself. That's not really something I've ever really been worried about, but some people feel like when a round becomes discolored, then there must be something functionally wrong with the round, and that's not necessarily the case. So my short answer is I don't see any problem whatsoever with leaving magazines loaded for an extended period of time. But that extended period of time, again, is, is, is something that has to be defined. For me, six months is probably going to be the maximum which I'd be comfortable leaving a magazine loaded. Uh, I do like, especially with the P-Mags, is they have the dust cover cap, which not only does it uh, protect the ammunition inside of it if it's going into storage or if it's going to be you know, jostling around in a case or in a trunk vault in a police car or something like that, but it also keeps the rounds from sitting against the feed lips, which one of the arguments that goes back to polymer magazines is you're more likely to have a swelling and a pressure issue at the feed lips of the magazine than you are at the body of the magazine, which is definitely true with some types of polymer magazines that are out there. I haven't really experienced that with Magpuls. Now, I have dropped a 30 round full Magpul on concrete and it hit just right and it did crack the feed lip. So this is another thing that I can use to protect those magazines. Now, if I were to be carrying this, say, in a plate carrier or on a belt or something like that, I obviously wouldn't be using the cap. But for, for storing in the gun safe or as a tertiary magazine that goes in the trunk vault, it's very easy to just pop these off, put them in a pouch and go to work. For very high capacity magazines such as the D60, it comes with a basically a dust cap. That's all it is. Uh, they're actually kind of hard to get off, as you can see. Just based on the way that this magazine is designed, all the R&D that went into the D60, uh, there isn't a lot of tension pressing up based on the design against the feed lips. It's going to cause undue issues uh, compared to a 30 rounder or something else. As far as other extended or high capacity magazines, because I consider the 30 round to be the standard capacity magazine, uh, these are the ones that I really trust. The Surefires are also very good until they're not, and disassembly them is well, it, it's, a, it's an aggravating process, and reassembly is, is near impossible for most mere mortals. So I hope that answers the question. You should definitely do preventative maintenance on your magazines, but keep in mind that they are perishable. If one of them starts to give you issues, or if you feel like the magazine isn't dropping free like it used to, then it may have taken on a swell, and that's something you should check. A uh, simple set of, uh, you can get a simple caliper from uh, your local big box home improvement store and you can measure that magazine's width uh, against the width of a brand new out of the package magazine and see if there is a difference there. Or sometimes you can visually look at the magazine and say, okay, there is a bowing going on somewhere in the body of the magazine. In that case, I'd write a big T on that magazine for training or just throw it away because it is a perishable item. So I certainly hope that addressed the question of leaving magazines loaded long term uh, for your self-defense uh, everyday carry guns. If you have any other questions on this topic or questions in general that you'd like to see answered in a questions answered video, you can drop them in the comments section below. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.